we have been learning about the unit circle. So in this video, I want to show you how to create the unit circle. On your test, you will really need the unit circle, but you will not be given the unit circle. So you have to memorize it or be able to recreate it by yourself. Now here's the unit circle. And I know when you first look at it, you think, wow, I have to memorize that whole thing. All those angles, all the X's and the Y's, the radians. Well, I want to show you how it's actually not that hard. What I'm going to do is, basically all you have to memorize is everything in the first quadrant. If you memorize all the information in the first quadrant, you can then translate and recreate all the rest of the unit circle. And that's what I want to show you. So really, it's not as daunting or difficult as you might think at first. So let's do this. Let's go figure out everything for the first quadrant, and then I'll show you how to translate that to all the rest of the unit circle. So let me try and draw a pretty good sized unit circle. It's hard to draw a nice circle freehand. Once again, the unit circle, the radius is one. The unit circle is drawn on the X and Y axis. The chances of this circle looking good are probably very slim. But, anyways, so now you should know all the. Now, I'm just going to do radians because, like I've said before, for the most part, when we do problems that need the unit circle, we don't use degrees a lot. It's mainly to be used when we have problems with radians. So the x-axis, positive x-axis is of course zero. We know halfway across the circle we've got a distance of pi. So the negative x-axis is pi radians. So the angle is pi. Of course the y-axis, positive y-axis is halfway between zero and pi. So that seems pretty clear. It's pi over two. And the negative y-axis is halfway between pi and, we mark this all the way around, is 2 pi again. So we start at 0, go all the way around, end up at 2 pi. But down here, half the distance between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. Now let's go ahead for these points, let's go and fill in the x and the y. Because the whole key to the unit circle is once you go find your angle, we know that the value of x at that point is the cosine and the value of y is the sine. So at 0 or 2 pi, we know the x, it's pretty simple, right? x is 1, y is 0. Now we go up here to pi over 2, and we know in this case now x is 0 and y is 1. If we go here to pi, what is the value of x? The value of x is negative 1, the value of y is 0, and down here at 3 pi over 2, x is back to 0, and now the value of y is negative 1. So these will be the sines and the cosines. If you ever have sines and cosines of 0 or 2 pi or pi over 2 or pi or 3 pi over 2. Very easy to remember. it. Now I'm going to go in the first quadrant and figure out all the information. So each quadrant has three special angles. You got the one right halfway between and then you got one on either side. Notice this is halfway in between. These are not halfway of what's left. Both these points actually are closer to the midpoint. 
Now I do, I do tell you, in terms of the first quadrant, this is the stuff you have to memorize. But if you memorize the information for the first quadrant, then for the most part, you don't have to memorize anything else to figure out the rest of the unit circle. Now this middle point is pretty easy because if zero is here and pi over two is here, this one's halfway. It's like half, half of pi over two is actually pi over four. And now here's where you have to sort of memorize, just remember that this first one is pi over six. Now let me give you a little hint. In all these angles, we always have a pi in the denominator. But to think about the sizes, you can almost ignore the pi because you know what? This point here, I can think of this as like one sixth and this is one fourth. Well, one sixth is smaller than one fourth. So that, you know, tells me, oh yeah, the pi over six is, is closer to the x axis. And this one up here, which is a little bigger, it's pi over three, right? So pi over six is the smallest angle. Pi over four is the mid angle, and it's halfway between zero and pi over two. And pi over three is the largest angle, which pi over three is a bigger number than these two. Now, for each of these points, let's figure out the x and the y, and then we've finished the first quadrant. Well, you can do whatever you want, I've just done this enough that I sort of have it, I sort of know it, but let's, let's think of a sort of a clever way to remember it. So here's three points. The one thing you know is all the X's and Y's for all these all have a denominator of two. Now the nice thing is, pi over four, the x and the y are the same. And maybe you can just memorize it's square root of two over two. Here's one thing that some people do to remember these x's and y's. They look at the signs and they look at this top and they sort of count up. In other words, they got a one here you got a two here under the square root, and up here, you have a three under the square root. So basically you have one, two, three, of course these last two are both under the square root. And then if you look at the x values, it's the opposite. You start with the one up here, here's two under the square root, and then here's a three under the square root. You can use whatever method works for you, but you are at some point going to have to know how to figure out the X and the Y's for these three points. Of course, the good thing is square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and look at pi over 6 and pi over 3. They're just flipped, right? This one up here is 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Down here, square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. So even those are actually the same values. It's just they get flipped. So whatever you have to do, if you can write the first quadrant, then I'm going to show you in a minute how the rest of the quadrants aren't that hard. Here's what you do. Let's take them one at a time. I'm going to take this pi over six point. I explained last time there are four points on here that all have the same reference angle. They're all going to look just the same. Well, let's do this. Let's choose the middle point here. So pi over 4, I'm going to look at the middle point here, the middle point here, and the middle point here. So these four are all grouped together. They all have the same reference angles. That's why they're all grouped together. I know they're all going to have a denominator of 4, for the angle. And they're all going to have pi in the top. So now it's just a matter of what's the last number in the numerator. Well, you got to think to yourself, this is where you have to have a good feel for fractions. You know, 
What could this be? 2 pi over 4, where 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, obviously, it's got to be 3 pi over 4. You go down here, pi, if you think about it, pi is the same as 4 pi over 4, right? 4 pi over 4 is the same as pi. Therefore, you bump up the numerator by 1, and you get 5 pi over 4. And you go here, and you get 7 pi over 4. Now what's interesting is, the x and the y for pi over 4 is exactly the same as the x and the y for these other four points. So I can go ahead and, well not exactly the same, but the same, the same numbers. That's why I say once you remember that pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2, they're all the same thing. The only difference is going to be the positive and negative. And you already know this. If I'm in quadrant 2, what is x in quadrant 2? Are x's positive or negative numbers? They're negative. So i got to make my x a negative. And what's the y for quadrant 2? The y is positively positive. I go to quadrant 3. If I think about x and y, what happens with negatives and positives? Both x and y are both negative in quadrant 3. So I go ahead and make them both negative. I go to quadrant 4. What about quadrant 4? Well, y is negative in quadrant 4, so I make it negative. Boom. I've got those four points. How about the power of 6? Once again, these things get grouped up. The four points closest to your x-axis. So pi over 6, I know it's going to have a 6 and a pi in the top. I know it's going to have a 6 in the bottom and a pi in the top. I know it's going to have a 6 in the bottom and a pi in the top. Now let's figure out what number should be in the top. Well, if I think of pi, pi is like 6 pi over 6. So what are my possibilities here? 5 pi over 6, right? It's just a little bit less than 6 pi over 6. How about this one? If pi, I can think of a 6 pi over 6. Isn't 7 pi over 6 just a little bit bigger than 6 pi over 6? And if I go here all the way around, I get to 2 pi. 2 pi is the same as 12 pi over 6. What's a little bit less than 12 pi over 6? How about 11 pi over 6? So once again, all four of these points have the same denominator of 6, and you just have to sort of use common sense to figure out what the numerators are. And now, you know what? The x and the y of pi over 6, that's going to be the same exact numbers all the way around. And all I have to do is figure out the signs. So at 5 pi over 6, what's x over in the second quadrant? x is negative. If I go to 7 pi over 6, it's the same x and y. Except now when I look at the, at the uh, signs, the positive and negative, how about x and y? They're both negative. If I go to 11 pi over 6, it's the same two points, square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. What's negative in the fourth quadrant? The y is negative. And now all I have left is the pi over 3, and once again, I can look at these four points. They're all going to have a 3 in the denominator and a pi in the numerator. And then I sort of count. If this is pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. The pi over 3 is the easiest one, pretty much. It's just 1, and 2, and then 4, and then 5. 
And then if I look here, I've already got my X and Y for power over three. It's gonna be the same numbers over here. And all I have to do is watch the signs. In quadrant two, what's negative? The X is negative. Here's quadrant three. One half square root of three over two. What's negative? Actually, they're both negative. Finally, in quadrant four, same two numbers. What's negative in quadrant four? The Y is negative. Okay, so there I have created a unit circle. And now, anytime you're given a problem where you're asked to find the cosine or the sine of one of these angles, and you will be asked to do that a lot, then you will have the answer. So to wrap up, for me, when you work with the unit circle long enough, you sort of can do it in your head. If I'm asked for five pi over three, five pi over three I know is like in the fourth quadrant. I know it's that first point down here. But for you, what I'm gonna suggest, what you need to do is when you get your test, you go grab your test, find some, the back of a page or some empty space, take three or four minutes, actually just create the unit circle, and then you've got it for the rest of the test. And anytime you need to know a trig function of one of these angles, you just go refer to your unit circle. So that's what I'm gonna strongly encourage all of you to do. But you've gotta practice it. You've got to be able to create the unit circle. And once again, the whole key is, if you know all the information in the first quadrant, the other three quadrants just mimic it. And the only thing you have to do is, it can be a little tricky, but you have to just make sure you figure out your radian angles. So the unit circle is used all the time and it's very helpful when you're working out these trig problems.